And uh, I don't know if she'll be back home when we, our international uh, choir will sing for Harry. But uh, Malia Perlini, of Thai Lover for coming. <laughs> I am so sorry I'm late again as usual. <laughs> um, um, I thought I had to come up and uh, be an unofficial spokesman for our international community, so greetings to everybody. Uh, what excuse can I give except that my sister, we got lost, we went round and round, <laughs> and stopped to ask some kids. And I said, why do you have to ask kids? They don't know where a funeral parlor is. So eventually we made it here. But um, Monica, thank you for the opportunity to just say a few words about about Professor. <coughs> that is the name I always, I've always called him. The name that was bestowed upon him by our bishop, uh, John Quinn. And every day, every Sunday after Mass, on my way to see the relic of St. Faustina, he's always packing up his musical instruments with Harry Jr. And I always say, my low professor. Um, of course, uh, we were one of the last uh, people to uh, see Harry while he was at home, at his home, uh, at uh, Mawa's home and uh, Josie. On Tuesday, I thank my sister for making me get up into the car and go and visit some people. And one of the last people we visited that day on Tuesday, last Tuesday, was Harry and Monica. I always make a point of bringing with me heaps and tons of uh, love from our, our parish. Every time I go back, I hear people saying, hey, Monica, Monica's back, Monica's back. She's giving the news. I say, no, she is looking after her husband. And uh, I must say, Professor, that you're so blessed. On the last day that I saw you on Tuesday, I watched the two of you. I shared with Monica, I shared this with Monica yesterday on the phone. I tried to share it on Facebook. I ended up deleting it. Um, those kinds of sentiments and experiences, uh, there's just not enough words. So, And I'm a major of English. So I decided, no, I can't, I just couldn't put it into words. But as I watched him, he was struggling, but he was still sitting in his chair in, in, in the lounge. He loves to hear news about home, uh, especially about our community. We are a very small international community, but made up of people are very difficult. So he always <laughs> likes to hear stories about, especially our choir. So the latest uh, topic on Tuesday, as he was listening, because he kept making noises while we were making too much noise in the kitchen, was regaling the stories about our latest fundraiser that we had two weeks ago in Pango for the Carmelite um, nuns. And as I was uh, sharing stories about how we shared so much food and the big feud about the pig, the size six pig, and you could see that he was. But um, he, I noticed, I noticed the big change in him on that day, and of course, um, you know, you don't want to to uh, dash anybody's hopes. But when I saw Monica tend to him every five minutes, she would go to the sitting room to where he was sitting, right across from the kitchen, and I, I, I said to myself, I want to be a wife like Monica. 
if somebody, something were to happen to my husband, I want to be like her. Because I have never seen, I don't know about Florence Nightingale. I think she deserves a, a reward, Professor. And I think God rewarded you with the way you went peacefully, how you were able to uh, listen to your whole family, a farewell you, and that's, I think most people would want to go like that. Um, be cared for, and you are such a man of great wit. This man does not talk much. He never says a sentence when he comes to church. He has played the best jazz music in mass for almost 20 years for our international community. And I know that our Lord has rewarded him in heaven for the, the, the music that we were so privileged to hear his playing this kind of playing that we're hearing from his brother, the Miller boys, so blessed with the natural talent. And we were able to enjoy that every every Sunday and every uh, Friday, every Friday morning. And I always wonder, how does Harry and Monica, especially Harry, sometimes she misses mass. Never <laughs> miss a mass. Friday morning and Sunday, never misses until the beginning of the of this year. I never shared this with Monica. I have a great ear for music, but I can't sing. I noticed this year, in January, I noticed that it was going out of tune. And then Tassi was going out of tune. And I noticed, it, so this is very uncharacteristic of him, but we never knew. He must have, if he was diagnosed with stage four cancer, Professor, the whole time. You must have been living on God's grace and be able to. He was never sick until he had the blackouts during Mass uh, end of, in February. End of January. End of January. This uh, man was never sick, always came and played uh, first class jazz music in the Church for God. So when I first vis visited them uh, in, I think it was uh, March, we brought a lot of Samoan food and he ate a lot of it. <laughs> in May, we visited him, he was in the hospital. We joked, gave him uh, flowers and a little beer, and uh, he was still, he was very well, his old self. But then uh, on Tuesday, it was a drastic change. And when my sister and I left, I, we, we said to ourselves, oh, we hope Tassie and the, and the baby and the two kids can make it on Friday. But unfortunately, God has a plan, had a plan for him, has a plan for all of us. So, um, so Monica, on behalf of our, I'm an unofficial spokesman because I've never, I haven't talked to our, Chairman of our of our international community, but just and on behalf of Irene, he will be at your service, Professor Inapia. Sorry, I cannot be there. I have a little operation on Wednesday. I'm telling you, Professor, if it wasn't for that, I would be in Pamo on Tuesday. But I have a little operation on Wednesday. So uh, thank you, everybody, and God bless, Professor. I know you're already up there. Yeah.